coach. Um, when Dwayne Wade was speaking on Sue Bird um, a few weeks ago, he mentioned that you know basketball is basketball. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter you know the league you're in. Did you find any particular struggles, you know, transitioning from WNBA to NBA? Yeah, that's a great question. The players are all just like that. I think most, uh, well, all the guys that are playing now are of a generation that is uh, written, has been around when Title IX, you know, you know what Title IX is? The law that was passed in 1972, 1973 that um, said that there must be equal opportunities in all educational environments. So as many scholarships as you have for men in college, you have to have for women. So that passed the year that I was born, essentially. So I have been super blessed to be riding that wave my whole life. Well, all the guys that are playing the NBA right now, they're, they're all Title IX babies as well. So those men, because of that law that was passed, their paradigms are, are a little bit different than maybe men of older generations because they've grown up with women being athletes right next to them. And so a lot of their friends, um, and now a lot of their daughters are athletes. And so they view me differently than maybe a 40-year-old, 50-year-old man would view me. So the challenges have been more from the coaches, honestly, or maybe fans that are of older generation men um, than they have in the players. The players, they love WBA. WBA has been around over 20 years now. I, I've been blessed to be a part of WBA since the day it started in 1997. And those guys grew up you know, with a different paradigm. That's why I was so passionate about the WBA when I began in the WBA in 1997. It's why I got into coaching instead of going to med school in the WBA is because I felt in 1997 as a member of the inaugural season, this is gonna be a difference maker for our culture and for our world because having a WBA will change not just a generation of women and young girls coming up with a dream now that they didn't have before, but it's gonna change a generation of men and how they perceive women. When we played, when I played in WBA in 1997, when I saw young boys, not just young girls coming wide-eyed and looking up to us, but young boys coming with our jerseys on, wearing a woman's professional basketball player's jersey, and I knew that young man would then grow up to marry a woman and have different respect for that woman and have different uh, respect for his daughter. I wanted to be a part of the WBA. And I'm very blessed to have been a part of that league for 20 years because that's the stuff that matters. And because of that, now there's opportunities for women like me to coach in the NBA because we've had WMA as our training ground to coach professional athletes and get on the court with some mojo and know how to work with a guy, a professional athlete. So it's all, it's, it's an exciting time, like you said, a very exciting time. But not just for sports, but just hopefully in how women are perceived in all life. Have you seen an increase of um, availability for women to enter the NBA or making it easier for them to see those opportunities? Yeah, men are open-minded now. So because Becky Hammond's done such a great job and Lord willing, you know, I'm doing a respectable job. Um, I've had many people from other organizations, men, ask me what other women can do this because now their mind is open to the fact that there might be a pool of candidates out there that they've not explored. And all, all they want to do on this level is win. And so if they now realize that there's a pool of candidates that might help that, that they've not even considered, their minds are opening now. And the interesting thing, and I tell all the guys this, that are considering hiring a woman in the NBA, is the majority of the men that are playing in the NBA were raised by women, not by men. A lot of them didn't have men in the home. They were raised by strong women mothers and grandmothers and older sisters. And they're very responsive to a woman in authority or a woman in a leadership position or a woman bossing them around because they're used to it their whole life. And so I think people are starting to understand that, you know, that there can be, uh, it can be a real difference maker and asset to have a woman on your staff and just have a little bit different voice and a voice that might be familiar for these young men.